All right, welcome back. Today we're going to be wrapping up the AI tutorial series and implementing a basic in-game system so that we can win or lose. And we're also going to be upping the fire rate of the enemies just to make them a little bit more exciting, probably also their movement speed. So we're going to hop right in here. I did make a single change. If we go over to the script and go to damageable event, we can see that I've changed the call group on the on hit. You can see here what it used to look like if I uncomment that. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to have it do just that. And that will be important in a moment. We don't actually need to keep track of score. What we need to keep track of is when enemies or the player uh, meet their demise. So we're going to leave that right there. First, we're going to go ahead and hop over to the code. And we're going to create two new scripts. And these are going to be called Game State Controller. All right. So what we're going to do is... We're going to check to see every time a in entity dies, player or enemy. We're going to count the number of enemies still alive, and we're also going to, if the if there are still enemies alive, we're going to check to see if the player still has health. So I went ahead and created this little panel. We're going to have a restart and a quit button, and we'll wire up those signals as soon as we actually have code to wire them up to. But then we're just going to duplicate this and change up the text a little bit for the losing screen. We also need to make sure that the groups are properly set up. So we have scoring group for the scoring UI. We also need damage on the enemy to be set to enemy damageable group that way we can count the number of enemies still alive so let's go ahead and hop into code we're going to start with the godot script and we're going to do godot script on the testing on this one i already tested it with c sharp it works just fine but i want to test with godot script this time around and then after we're done with all this we're going to talk a little bit about how i'm going to move forward with the next series of tutorials all right let's hop on in Okay, and so first off, we're going to create three exports. The first one is going to be a damageable event node reference, and this is going to be the player damageable. This is going to be a reference to the actual player damageable node, as it were. And then we're going to also need two references to controls. This is going to be the victory and loss screen. I'm going to leave them as controls. You could just put node or node 3D or what have you here, but control gives us the most accurate reference and also the on visible command. I'm not sure will work on other node types. So we're just going to have it a reference, a control reference. Next up, following this, we're going to go ahead and create a function or a public void in C sharp. We're going to create an on entity death function. This is going to replace our scorekeeping from before. Next up, we're going to add an array for no of node for enemy nodes and this is going to be calling the function get tree dot get nodes in group and then with the name enemy damageable and this is just going to get every enemy that's currently in the scene then we're going to create a boolean for checking to see whether we found any enemies alive so this boolean is going to default to false and then when we find an enemy we're going to set it to true Next, we're going to create a for loop or a for each loop in C sharp, where we're just going to get every enemy inside of enemy notes. Following that, we're going to check to see if the enemy is queued for deletion. And if it's not, we're also going to check to see if the enemy is a damageable event node just to make sure there's no issues. Then we're going to cast it in C sharp and we're going to, in either case, check the variable hit points is greater than zero. And if that is the case, then the enemy is alive. We set enemies to alive and we back out of this for each loop using the break function. Always use break functions if you are no longer needing what is in that loop. That way you have better performance. All right, we're going to step out for a second. All right, real quick, I'm going to break out of the code. The Godot script here says damageable event node is damageable event node. I actually did have to add a class name for that. I almost forgot. So be aware of that. If you don't have access to that class, you'll need to add class name up to the damageable event node. The C sharp script works just fine as is, but we're going to hop back into code and continue. All right, so next we're going to check to see if any enemies were alive. If they're not alive, then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set the input.mouse mode to input.mouse mode visible. This is just going to make sure our mouse is accessible. We're going to set the victory screen to true because there's no longer any enemies alive. And we're going to, more importantly, do get tree dot paused equals true. This is just going to kill all movement in the scene. Now, mind you, we do need to set the process for the UI to always. Next up, we're going to check to see, and we're going to return right there. So if that's the case, we're not going to do the rest of the code. But 
we'll go step on if that's not the case. We'll set check to see if the player damageable hit note hit points are below zero. And if they are, then we're once again going to set the mouse to visible and we're going to set the loss screen to visible. And then we're also going to pause. And that's pretty much it for the on entity death, but we do need two more functions for the buttons. The first one is going to be the restart function. And it's going to obviously unpause the tree first, and then it's going to reload the current scene. If you don't unpause the tree here, it will still be paused when you reload. And then you're going to need one more function, and that's going to be the quit function. And we're once again going to unpause it, but in this case, we're going to call the function gettree.quit. I actually need to go back and show a little bit of a video for right here about how to uh, set the processing to always on the node. So we'll do that. All right, and we're back in Godot. So let's go ahead real quick and hop in to the score UI control. Let's add in the game state controller. We're going to be going with Godot script for this one. All right, so we're just going to assign the victory screen and the damageable. Let's go ahead and connect up the restart and the quit buttons. So we're just going to go to pressed, and we're going to go down here to score UI. And we can hit pick, and then you'll see a couple options here, or whatever functions are available on this script. And you can also set it to only show compatible or no, not. All of these are compatible, though. So if we go ahead and hit select right there, that's our restart. So now we can go ahead and also connect this one, the score UI, and we'll, that'll be our quit button. So now both of those should be firing whenever they're pressed. Let's go ahead and duplicate that for the loss screen. And let's type in something witty. To error is human. Yeah. So that's what the end screen will look like. And it'll have pretty much the same buttons. So let's go ahead and hide both of these as we don't want them visible at the beginning of the game. And we should be good to go to go ahead and hit play and see what happens. All right. So when we get shot. Oh. We had an error. Ah, I did not select the loss screen. Let's go ahead and throw that in real quick. And let's hit play again. All right, so now we can restart or quit. Let's go ahead and hit restart. And we're good. And we'll test the quit button. That works just fine. Let's also try killing the enemy. All right, you won. Thank you for playing. So you can also see if we go ahead and throw in multiples, this will work with as many enemies as you want. The previous iteration of scoring just didn't wasn't really scalable. And so ever since it was made, I've actually been wanting to remake it. But now we've got the opportunity and it should be good to go. Let's go ahead and hit play real quick. And if you kill them all. So I actually ran into an interesting little error here. So the reason why this can occur is because Raycast controller is being checked within a normal function. So physics in general, Raycast or what have you, will only typically work if they're in the physics process or they're being called deferred. So let's go ahead and fix this actually. So if we just go right here and do call deferred, we had fire shot right there. So all this is going to do is wait till the end of the frame to actually check the physics to see if there's an enemy in the way. This way we don't encounter what I just encountered, which is a very edge case bug. I like to go ahead and clean up edge cases wherever we find them and write when we find them as that way they don't propagate, they don't last. <laughs> And now we've went ahead and destroyed all of them and we can hit quit and we close out. So that concludes this tutorial. It also concludes the AI series. So going forward, what I'm probably going to do for each project, whatever that may be, like the next one I'm intending to do character animation, I will have a single project folder that will continue and update until the last one. And if you ever want to have it at very at the various versions of the different tutorials, you can go back and look at the commit history, look at what it did looked like at that time. So there'll be a different folder for each project, but they will all be in a single repo. So that's what I'm probably going to do moving forward. This lets me have a little bit more of a cleaner stack as opposed to having script lying around all over the place over here on the left I would rather not do this again so we're gonna change things up ever so slightly we're gonna adapt and 
Hopefully moving forward that'll work, and if it doesn't, we'll just change that up again. As always, thank you all for watching. I'm excited to see where we move forward, and as always, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you all next week.